a most astonishing misconception, has long dominated the modern mind on the subject of St. Paul. It is to this effect that Jesus preached a kindly and simple religion found in the Gospels, and that St. Paul afterwards corrupted it into a cruel and complicated religion found in the Epistles. This is really quite untenable. All the most terrifying texts came from the mouth of our Lord. All the texts on which we can base such warrant as we have for hoping that all men will be saved come from St. Paul. If it could be proved that St. Paul altered the teaching of his master in any way, he altered it in exactly the opposite way to that which is popularly supposed. But there is no real evidence for a pre-Pauline doctrine different from St. Paul's. The epistles are, for the most part, the earliest Christian documents we possess. The Gospels come later. They are not the Gospel, the statements of the Christian belief. They are written for those who had already been converted and had already accepted the Gospel. They leave, um, they leave out many of the complications, that is, the theology, because they are intended for readers who have already been instructed in it. In that sense, the epistles are more primitive and more central than the Gospels, though not, of course, than the great events which the Gospels recount. God's act, the incarnation, the crucifixion and the resurrection comes first. The earliest theological analysis of it comes in the epistles. Then, when the generation who had known the Lord was dying out, the Gospels were composed to provide for believers a record of the great act and of some of the Lord's sayings. The ordinary popular conception has put everything upside down. Nor is the cause far to seek. In the earlier history of every rebellion, there is a stage at which you do not yet attack the king in person. You say, the king is all right. It is his ministers who are wrong. They misrepresent him and corrupt all his plans, which I'm sure are good plans if only the ministers would let them take effect. And the first victory consists in beheading a few ministers. Only at a later stage do you go on and behead the king himself. In the same way, the 19th century attack on St. Paul was really only a stage in the revolt against Christ. Men were not ready in large numbers to attack Christ himself. They made the normal first move, that of attacking one of his principal ministers. Everything they disliked in Christianity was therefore attributed to St. Paul. It was unfortunate that their case could not impress anyone who had really read the Gospels and the Epistles with attention, but apparently few people had, and so the first victory was won. St. Paul was impeached and banished, and the world went on to the next step the attack on the king himself. But to those who wish to know what's, what St. Paul and his fellow teachers really said, the present volume will give very great help.